Arizona. just say this as it is technology and the devil will not stop this show from not being broadcast out into the world we'd like to welcome you to apx where we educate you on sharpening your mind so that you can become an unbreakable mind an unstoppable force an untamed spirit and your own army of one i'm chris nell now i want to preface this because this interview is part and parcel of a subject which has been overlooked for far too long, an endemic which ruins households and corrupts individuals spiritually, mentally, and physically. It's an endemic about as old as the fabric of time, and all the great historical figures suffered from it. Catherine, Catherine the Great, Alexander of Greece, and one of its biggest perpetrators, of course, was Henry VIII, the great Tudor king. Think about how many wives he had had, how many wives he had killed because they couldn't bear him a son against Catholic doctrine. I'm referring, of course, to narcissism and narcissistic abuse. Some of the symptoms include an overinflated ego, a penchant for violence, and even a tendency to kill. In 1993, Julia Roberts tried to portray the effects of it in the film Sleeping with the Enemy, Today, a cult film, but overlooked at the time. The same curse that occurred with Jennifer Lopez in 2002's Enough, but only in the end of the 2010s, the small screen adaptation of a simple article by Chris Gifford led to the siring of Dirty John. How on earth for so many years can people overlook such a horrible infliction? Well, let me just backtrack a minute. Narcissistic abuse is a two-pronged process. Men and women get affected alike. It breaks your self-confidence. It breaks your self-esteem. In fact, can I be as so cruel to say there is no self-image? And guess what? I was one of its victims. Thankfully, the guest here in front of me survived it. And now she thrives on educating others. Azadeh Atzberger is a woman of measure. She's a transformational life coach. She started Finally Free Life. And Plus also has expanded upon that by going into couples coaching. She's also a great author with a wonderful balance of prose and self-help with two great books. One being The Adult Children of Narcissistic Parents with God We Will Build. And quite recently, she released 12 Steps of Recovery from Narcissistic Abuse. You may have seen her online as well, having previously done a show with me and Daniela Park on Doing It Sober. She also recently did a bunch of lives with Carrie Motley, who also specializes in recovery from narcissistic abuse. And she's also a motivational speaker, and she's got the gift of the gab. Azadeh will educate us today about what specifically is narcissistic abuse, trailing her own journey in it as well. And hopefully she will share some tips. And also for those of you who have suffered, that you can yourself rise from the ashes. Azadeh, a privilege beyond measure. It's been too long. Yeah, it sure has. It's been too long. And we will have have to make changes to not let it go too long. Thank you, my friend, for having me this morning to help raise awareness, which is my mission. Thank you. Oh, it's only a pleasure. Azadeh, you and I spoke about this when we did the last show, Doing It Sober Life. Um, you are the child of immigrants, right? Yes. I Well, we, we, um, we moved here from Iran. When right. I was six years old, 
Yeah. So, um, yes. But tell me, you yourself are a child of narcissistic abuse. How exactly? And yes. Tell me a little bit about your background. Absolutely. Chris, um, I was born in Iran. Mm -hmm. And during the revolution, around six, seven years old, we moved to the United States. And the thing about narcissistic abuse is that when raised by parents, you don't know it's abuse because you're groomed and conditioned that abuse is love. Of course, of course. And I didn't know the person that is my hero, and I cannot find her today, was a therapist that I met when I was 38 years old. So I'm 52 now. No way. She told, yes, yes. She oh, told me. You're, you're yes. 25. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I really do a lot of. I do try and take care of myself, men, you know, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and I'll get into the recovery of sure, abuse. Sure. But so she told me, you were raised, Azade, you are raised in a narcissistic home. There was a name to it. I was seven, already I was seven or eight years sober at the time. And I just couldn't understand why I'm being treated the same way that I was being treated when I was high on drugs and, and active in my alcoholism. The abuse right. was still pr present. Absolutely. And so, you know, and so I couldn't understand that. And I couldn't understand all this nitpicking and criticizing and all of this control and um, devaluing and discarding the highs and lows with my parents. I couldn't understand that. And I really tried. I worked the 12 steps. I worked so many recovery programs. I couldn't find my way around it until the therapist said, you were raised in a narcissistic home. That's what's going on. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It must have been a revelation too, you know. I had an alcoholic for a father, so I inherited the alcoholic yeah. gene from him. Um, I said this in numerous forms when I was in the meetings, that when you are a son, you go to your father to get your courage, but when you're a daughter, you go to your mother to get some self-confidence, to get your image. Now, you know as well as I that sons, boys need to have a, lo a little rougher. Your pain tolerance needs to be exercised. That's why we are all rough and tough. Women run on estrogen, men run on testosterone. But for boys, because their father are rough and tough, it is seen as a, as a norm that that smack that they get or that abuse that they suffer verbally it's just a part of growing up but what men fail to realize is that that abuse carries on as well so i didn't know what narcissism was until it itself was made was was literally revealed unto me and it ticked so many boxes but let's break down narcissism into define characteristics. What are some of the character traits of narcissistic behavior? Absolutely. Narcissist, my heart goes out to you, by the way, Chris, as my friend, that you, because I, I want to say this before I go into the traits. The most lethal narcissistic relationship is parental. Second most lethal is marriage. Third most lethal is, is friends, boss, etc. So you and I having parents is the most lethal type of narcissistic abuse. And so my hat is off to you and I send you a hug for your survival. Anyway, so the traits of, yes. So the traits of a narcissist is that Early warning signs is somebody that is going to be very much um, wanting to be with you, see you, be in connection with you, just this whole, this whole love bomb. And now I'm talking about romantic, which seems to be um, where, uh, where most people are coming forth because adult children of narcissists, I'm going to tell you this, most of them, and this is 
this is huge for you and I both. Most of them never stop using or drinking chronic relapsers, marry narcissist, or are in prison, or Six they are, you know, so, yeah, or they are homeless. Most na- children of narcissistic parents don't have a high success rate. Yeah, absolutely. They don't. They don't. They don't. It is a, to say that. Yes. Yeah. So you are a miracle on top of miracle and miracle. Because like I said, we do continue that because it is the become age one to seven, the relational template is laid down in our soul. So to go against that takes incredible unbelievable amount of work, effort, intention, healing path. I mean, it is recreating your life. So that's what I want to say first. And most of my clients are um, in marriages and um, uh, divorcing, you know, something like that. So anyway, what are the traits? What are the traits of a narcissist? How do we know we are with a narcissist? This is this is a situation where it goes from love to abuse in not that long of a time. It shows up within six months to a year around six months to a year. So the first stage of a narcissist is they are amazing, charming, electric, um, engaging, charismatic, and this electric energy about them that you just, everybody wants to be around them. They want to be around them. They're giving kind, generous, engaging, loving. What happens is those are all an agenda to hook you in. That's what's scary. They are all Mary. to hook you in. And I'm, yes, and I'm telling you, I've had three girlfriends, two parents, one boyfriend, one boss. After the, I had to eventually see what those patterns were. So, because I kept attracting the familiar. And that's why I'm telling you that you and I in sobriety and living a life and doing what we're doing even right now is beyond huge because we are trained and groomed like the movie Matrix, to continue the narcissism path. And so anyway, so the traits. <laughs> I can't we, believe, we are. I can't believe you brought that yeah. up because I'm agreeing with you so hard on these things. Jeez. You, you, I know. We are going to be lifetime friends. I know it. Yeah, it is. Like you It is like the, the Matrix. Pattern, and you don't realize it. it. I know. That's what's scary. That's what's so so oh, scary. We can't even see because we're asleep to it. Very much. Even even if we watch like a hundred YouTubes on it, we still can. We still are are at a high risk because that's not enough. We have to do the inner work. We have to constantly be. There's so much involved. But but um. So to the traits of a narcissist, it literally is this: love bomb, devalue, discard, Hoover. Love bomb is the original. Love bomb is even scarier than when they start to devalue and discard you because you can actually see the darkness. But the love bomb is to hook you in. They want to get into your mind and they want to get into your heart. They want to plant a seed into your thoughts and in your heart. And the love bomb, without getting too teachy, they have a purpose of getting into your soul because then it's going to be so hard for you to leave. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Think and about that. Think about that. that. Like immensely. How many cat fights did she and I have about situations oh. like this? When the cracks were more than visible, I would say, don't. And I'm just savoring details yeah. here. But when I would say don't, then she would agree with me, but then contradict me two sentences later. Flipping oh, the I script. Know. With me too as well. When I wanted to enter the dating pool, I went towards women who were destructive and not realizing that they themselves were emotionally abused. And you know yourself, uh, hurt people hurt. So as a result, I was attracting that to me as well in my romantic relationship. And when that didn't work out, I sort of said to myself, okay, well, this this is me. And that's what the narcissist does. They break down that self-image because it's all about control, isn't it? Yes. Oh, I'm so happy you just touched on that. In sobriety, in recovery, we 
we want a relationship and we want to be with someone that we can share life with. And unfortunately, having that parental impact until we get so ready to go to the next level, we keep attracting them into our life. Yeah. It's like this. It's like a moth to a flame. It's like an empath and a narc. It's like, it's insane of how these familiar patterns are just like magnetic. It's insane. And so, um, anyways, uh, the narcissist trait. So they want to hook you in right away, fast. And when they hook you in, you start seeing the changes. You start seeing what they loved and adored about you. Now they're criticizing and bashing. They want, here's the deal. They want to break you. They want to break your brain and they want to, and weaponize your emotions. They want to hook you into what is called the trauma bond so that you have, so you, so you don't have the strength to leave. Yeah. And you can't be independent. And you can't be independent. Mm -hmm. And you don't know what to do. And they alienate you from those that you love. And even oh, those relationships it, go up in smoke. And exactly. It's such a web to crawl out of. And and I'm going to, I didn't think I'd do this, but here's where God is le leading me is that being a child of a narcissist, you have to navigate. And I wrote this in my second book. Um, adult children of narcissistic parents with God, we rise and rebuild. I wrote that, that for adult children, we have to navigate a maze with unpredictable bombs that they set in us to go off yeah. to make them, make us go back to them because of duty, culture, uh, loyalty, um, forgiveness. And, you know, so it's such a challenge, but so anyway, so it goes from, love bomb. And then, so they start to devalue. They start nitpicking, criticizing, blaming, gaslighting. And what you said about your mom is really real because they groom, abuse train you by gaslighting you mentally. So you start doubting yourself, oh, doubting man. your perception. I can't add <laughs> to that. You just hit the nail on the head. The, the doubt is just unbelievable. And here's another aspect, and you can share on this as well. Once you get to the revelation with regards to that you have been abused in a narcissistic relationship, familial and or otherwise, you want to reclaim that independence. But now you grab, or oh, how do you say in America, you swing for the fences. You know, if, 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 if you want to reclaim your independence, all of a sudden now you want to go and work out excessively, or you want to start dieting excessively or you want to um, all of a sudden be a wild child, if I can just throw that uh, example in yes. there. All of, which, all of which I was susceptible to. Please, I'm not just throwing it out there in the wind. This is what I went through uh, uh, after I had discovered that, you know, my father is a, is a narcissist and I've been involved in narcissistic relationships. Now you want to cling for that independence. But where do you realize or do you have to come to the realization that you are walking into a red zone for danger? Yes, because I have been, there is all of those things you said is absolutely accurate. I have went back into the lion's den more than I want to admit, hoping it'll be different, hoping it'll change. Now I am pretty much um, at a place where I hope and pray I don't have any narcissists in my life except my parents. They're seven hours away though. And so there's up the boundary. I have created really strong boundaries and my husband holds Ooh. me accountable to them. Yeah. Super strong, super strong. Like, Oh my God. For one, the one is absolutely no physical, um, presence with them. Absolutely mm. not. And I'm going to, I'm going to share something, Chris, trigger warning for our listeners. Sure. My covert nurse's father sexually molested me. And after my 15 name is years of and I was serially sexualized by my father. You, there, there, we meet each other halfway. 
You too? <laughs> Ever since I was seven years old. Yes. I feel so much empathy for that inner child. And at the same time, I'm so grateful for you in my life. And your vulnerability and courage is nothing less of a warrior. It's, uh, it's, uh, and it's okay. And it's okay. It's okay. You're absolutely right. That it happened. It happened. And I confronted him. As did I with my dad. Very violently, I should add. Yeah. This is the hardcore of being, this is what I'm saying. This is, these wounds, these traumas, these abuses, there's nothing more more horrifying and and traumatic that can happen to an innocent child. And to be able to walk through those and stay sober and have a life and a mission and friends and recovery is is unbelievable. Is unbelievable because I've been sober almost 23 years in, in the rooms of recovery. And I can't tell you how many people will not think you will not talk about this stuff or not get the healing they need to. And mm -hmm. then and they keep relapsing, keep relapsing, keep relapsing, and then die. And that's what happened to my brother. He overdosed six years ago. And I, I know hands down, it's called it's called overdose, but it is. It was undiagnosed um, narcissistic abuse, the gaslighting and all that. Because the, the, yeah. they break your brain. They break your brain. They do. they do. And they convince you that you're stupid. They convince yes. you that you're stupid. Yes. 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 But yes. now, and I have to congratulate you on this as well, because when I read with, um, you maintain a blog as well on your website. And what I like mm -hmm. about your writing is that it is intelligent but that even someone who isn't so intelligent or has a street-level intelligence can understand what you're saying because you write a story. And I'm sure for you, when you started going and doing work with regards to um, uh, uh, helping to heal, let's use that as a positive turn of phrase, that when you discovered these gifts, it must, it, was like, it must have been like being reborn on top of being reborn. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes. And I'm so grateful to have you on this journey with me. I feel so much closer to you as a friend because we have to stick together because there is such a population in this world that doesn't understand, wants to do the spiritual bypass, wants to force forgiveness. Want, you know, it's such a big process, but um, yes, yes, I agree with you. And I, um, and now it's become my mission for life, and I will go big as I can to raise awareness, as big as I can. And well, I've become fearless. And I can see it in your eyes. Because I'm, yeah, thank you, thank you. I am done with psychopaths and sociopaths and narcissists, which is all within the cluster B, I mean, um, the dark triad personality disorders and, and how, and how we get demolished and ruined. I have, you know, so um, I do want to just, if I may, Chris, we go from love bomb to devalue and then discard. So they start devaluing you and starting to, to make you think that it's your fault that they're, they start making you responsible for the abuse. They start making you doubt your reality. They break your brain. And then what they do is they discard you, which looks like silent treatment, um, ghosting you, um, stonewalling you. And then when you are in so much emotional pain, because that is emotional abuse, 
if you are not awakened or have enough resilience or strength, you go, you start to create the pattern with them, which is what they want to go chase them and want them back, which I've done more than I want to admit. Please be with me. Please don't leave me. What did I do wrong? This is so sad. And it's called fawning in the CPTSD, which is relational abuse, complex post-traumatic stress disorder. The fawning is where we get stuck. And that, my friend, is what victims need to heal is the fawning because we stay stuck in the fawning response and we keep attracting other narcs. So oh, then yeah. the discard, and then when they discard you, they, they, they hope you come back. And if you don't, they come back and go back to that original state. Like, look, let's forget it. Let's move on. I'm sorry. You're amazing. I love you. And you, your brain goes, okay, good. We're back to where we were. And the whole cycle just continues and continues and continues. And it escalates where it's happening all it, it, like, literally, it doesn't even have to be a week or a month. All of those, all of those, that cycle can happen repeatedly two or three times in one day. Love bomb, devalue, discard, Hoover, boom, 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 boom. And so you can, and, and what happens when we escalate to that place with that person is that we are in so much mental uh, torture and emotional pain that we can't even think our way out. And that's where I come in is I help people create strategies and escape plan as we do the healing work to come back to who they are. Hmm. Great stuff. I love what you're, what you're uh, prescribing. Now, can we delve into the action plan or the escape plan as we resolve it? Now I've heard, and I'm consulting just from various resources, because there has been various books written on identifying narcissists, identifying sociopaths, and the like. There was even one, please don't crucify me, but a local writer even dubbed one narcissist, you get the narcissist, but then you get one underneath it called an arsehole. <laughs> very tongue-in-cheek. <laughs> very tongue-in-cheek, I know, but and also particularly crude, not classy. But yeah, it's fine. Yeah. In the book, it has been said, Start procuring your own financial independence. Wherever you can scrounge a couple of money, put that away. Um, start making sure that you can be independent by means of just packing your bag, even if it's a go bag, out the door you go. Is that also part of the escape plan? Absolutely. For you and I, it's going to be much more emotionally challenging because these are our parents and, and, and they abuse us in the name of love. But in, yes, it is. It is. I, um, I did this. So although every all my work is something I did for myself, I literally escaped middle of the night with my husband after my brother overdosed because I almost drank. So what I learned is you you create another life on the side, and some recovery circles would be like, "That's not honest." Well you don't know what it's like to be in a narcissistic relationship. You, I teach people how to create a love on the side, financially, emotionally, mentally, as I teach them the dynamics of the abuse and help them reclaim themselves because they've lost themselves to that relationship so that when they leave, it's a smooth exit because up to seven or more times, people try and leave the abuser and keep going back. For children of a, of of parents with narcissists, for us it's twenty five times or more. For marriages, research shows us. we go back and back, and we go back, and I did, we keep going back and feeling having more empathy for them than for us because they're trying to hook us back in with the sob story why they abused us, whatever. But with mar so for us. 25 or more times we go back to the narcissist parent for the marriage. They go back up to seven times before. So I, so I, my job, Chris, is to make that first time or second time as solid as possible. So when they leave, it's smooth, clean, and, um, and the narcissist can't find them. I mean, I do so much with it. That's where I get my passion. That's where I get my fire. That's as you probably picked up on it right now. Well, what I love about what you've been doing and 
from our conversation being an exemplary example, I don't see a victim, quote unquote. I see a woman reborn. You know, you th- you thought I must have been pulling your leg when you referred to your age, but truly you've really healed wonderfully well. And I was reading an article about this on a similar subject, that when you heal and it's from the inside out, um, then the true inner radiance starts to uh, flourish. You know, um, being my, you and I being in the same circle, you've had a little bit more experience than I in this regard, but one thing that has helped me in my healing is physical exercise because that was one of the, yes. the the main target triggers was I was convinced that I wasn't physically adept and whatnot because I played sports here and there but never physically excelled. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. When, I, mm-hmm. well, when I made the mental switch for myself and said, you know what, I'm going to do this because I want to, a day and a night's difference. Um, I believe firmly as well that when you are a survivor of trauma, putting it into the positive, that when you start to make all of these internal changes, which is a day at a time, it's not deny, it's not going to happen in one day, mm-hmm. um, a lot of things start to fall into place. Health being one of them, mental and physical, but also relationships. Yes. And I yes. want to touch on this for folks like you and I, uh, who are now, you're happily married, you mentioned as well that your husband as well as a trauma survivor, um, What were the steps that you took where you said, I'm going to start trusting? Because Carrie Motley, who you've worked with, also delved on something like this. It's not something that happens easily, that really you have to do some step work before you start going into opening up and trusting someone else until eventually going into a relationship. Delve a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You touched on all most of the solutions. My husband, I met him when I was 37. He's also in recovery. And I, I, I'll, I'll tell you this, is that I had to teach myself to receive because it was so foreign that I was suspicious of it. So I had to sit through the uncomfortability of being loved. I sabotaged it for sure the first year of our relationship. But now we've been together 15 years. And so having that safety in my home and that unconditional love and consistent gentle spirit around me i've grown i want you i want our listeners and you to also know chris that i i radiate at page at age 52 way more than i did when um i was around the narcs because what happens is it literally corrupts your internal soul it's such an assault to your soul that you start aging and your face starts molding in a way of just despair you don't have life because they're sucking it out of you so i look younger and and feel more energetic now that's one thing it is like my my husband was even just saying azadeh your face is just younger every year and it's because i'm around nurturing spirits one second exercise 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 eat right and sleep these will all help and aid your 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 um, recovery process i know in the beginning might be hard because the brain won't let you sleep it won't let you come out of fear and that's what they instill in you they instill what i call systematic fear they instill fear in you to leave or to be autonomous or independent so you Mm -hmm. feel stuck even when you leave them so find safety um trust your body around people to trust if you don't if you're not sure who to trust you got listen to your body or after you've been in narcissistic abuse, it's like, God, the discernment gets loud. You can feel when someone's toxic or has an agenda, trust it. And third, like you said, exercise, eat right, pray, meditate. I have that practice every morning. Um, and that's age of recovery and strengthen you the most fast. Mm. But those are things you can do on top of getting help. Yeah. And let's just add something here with regards to the exercise, because I know on this program I've been an endorser of it. When you, when I talk about exercise, I'm referring to exercising to condition this. Mm. The mm, muscles mm. are an add-on, referring to the inside mm-hmm. out as mm-hmm. well. Remember, you are challenging principalities that has been predestined yes. over your life. Forgive me for using a hoi polloi word or a highfalutin word. But you're challenging principalities. 
And as a result, now you need to break loose of those principalities. And by doing something that makes you physically uncomfortable and even emotionally uncomfortable, that challenges those principalities. And when you continuously mm -hmm. challenge those principalities through exercise and even through other extracurricular activities, which gives you that feeling to excel, that release of serotonin instead of that dopamine hit, which what you and I mm -hmm. used to get in uh, uh, yes. active addiction, complete 360 and your turn of thinking starts to become a whole lot more in the positive direction. I said to Azade earlier, you start to also realize things about yourself that was always there, but because of the abuse that you suffered, you couldn't put a finger to it. And you start to rediscover the things that you love. For example, uh, Azade and I are both diehard Metallica fans. You got the opportunity yes. to see them in concert. Yes, I don't good memory, my friend. Yes, I did. Oh, I, we, oh, I can't wait to introduce you to my husband. We, the three of us could rock out for hours but i interrupted keep going no 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 i just used it used it as an example so yeah that's why i yes. kept highlighting yes. throughout the podcast about the emphasis of exercise and if i could also endorse this as well start looking at taking nootropics to uh, to start healing uh, yeah. those parts in your brain oh thank you lord someone else knows about nootropics um, yes i am a fastidious endorser of nootropics because even in I believe firmly as well that because of emotional and spiritual abuse you get inflammation on the brain which can yes. hurt you terribly so those yes now it's your turn to speak because I know you're. I'm sorry I'm just there. agreeing with no, 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 you no no no, sorry. no 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 carry on carry oh, it's on good. I love this oh my god I love it too I could talk to you for hours Chris you're so right because the gaslighting will create holes in the brain it will take the tracks off of the the wiring of healthy thinking into off healthy It'll, mental health is going to be shot i mean big time. i mean how could you big time and the, you know what chris i have to tell you this my therapist when i was 37 she told me i was born into a narcissistic family cult both my parents are narcissists by the way mom is a, a grandiose father is a covert and uh, and can i will use another word One's a Jezebel, yes. one's the Ahab, right? Oh my God, you know, you know about Jezebel and Ahab? Woo no wonder we had technical issues in the, the Zinga, beginning. Drop the mic. Yes, we are dropping the mic. And very few people know about the Jezebel and Ahab spirit. I am aware. And knowledge, knowledgeable, no, have gained knowledge around those spirits. But um, that's so cool that you know that. That's so cool that you know that. Anyways, um, Sorry, what I was going to say is you that, said yeah. That you were at your therapist at 37, and then I. <gasps> oh, yeah, yeah. That. She said. I have a Jezebel spirit. Yes. Yeah, she said. She said. Um, she said you were raised in a narcissistic home, but then my Christian counselor that I did the deep healing on sexual abuse, and now I, I can help others with it because I, she taught me the tools how to heal. That. So she taught me about the Jezebel and Ahab spirit, and um, I was like, wow, it just it, it really mat aligns perfectly with the characteristics. Mm. So you know the healing is available. Healing is available. It just is. You got to That's the first step. The first step is to know that healing is available. Second, you can't heal in the same rooms and home of your abuser. You can't. have to break away. You can set boundaries. Yeah, yeah. You have to break away. You can't heal with living with the abuser. You have to find safety. That's probably the hardest for a lot of people because not only are they afraid that the fears that come up with that is, oh, he or she will find someone and be happy, or I can't be alone, or I'm too old, or I don't have money, and I have children. The ones with the ones that have children and don't have financial, they have financial dependence on the narcissism, there's still ways. And we talk, because they just don't know their choices. They just don't know what choices oh are available because the brain has been broken by the narcissist. They can't. Yeah think for them they're just stuck in rumination and cognitive dissonance mm, so absolutely 
Absolutely. And I think that breakaway phase, if I can just give it that turn of phrase, is the most difficult. Sure. Yes. The path to recovery from narcissistic abuse is long, and you and I are fastidious examples because that trust element is not there. Look, I've got to be honest. There were times in recovery as well where I struggled to connect with people, so I would be drawn back, but then there would come times where I would be abundantly extrovert. I admit I'm witty, but I was always afraid that I would go a little too much because you said you said it yourself because you've been love bombed now you want real love and i admit there are times myself why i have flashbacks of the abuse yes. that i suffered and you almost cur curl into a little ball like this mm -hmm. but um then i just say the words i forgive and it's okay and it's over and then i move on so that healing does take a long while but that breakaway phase is the hardest and the rest will come with time. Look, healing yes. is nonlinear. And I've said this yeah. so many times, so many times. And I'm sure as well that when it comes to the relationship phase, that trust element needs to be built. So there has to be patience. There has to be um, uh, not just resilience, but also copious amounts of understanding and along with that it will build that maturity i want to touch on something um not to steer it in a certain direction but now we get to the matter of intimacy which also affects men and women um i'm sure for you as well let's just talk focus on emotional intimacy it must have taken a long sure. while to build emotional intimacy as well when you trusted, when you started to begin to trust in your marriage, agree? Yes, I do agree. Emotional intimacy, um, and for me, sexual connection too, but those two were the hardest to push through, and I still sometimes struggle. And I can That's, understand that. I, I'm honest. I'm honest. But I have a husband who is extremely patient and loving and wants what's best for me with every step of the way. So the emotional intimacy um, is all about letting someone in your heart again by being vulnerable. And that's hard when you've been abused. It's been super, super hard. But through lengthy conversations and connections, I have consistently seen that my husband will want the same thing. He wants the same thing. And so we... We'll see that. We'll see that. You will see someone has the same goal. Even if they even if they say they do, we can feel when they don't because it will show up. Your true nature will show up eventually. Yeah, so yeah it does. The, the emotional intimacy, yeah, the emotional intimacy has been me practicing with great challenge and difficulty my truth, my truth, which is the antidote to codependency tell the truth so yeah. a, with that the that feedback too. yeah the feedback i get from people when i tell the truth are the ones that i know can i can have emotional safety and emotional honesty and emotional intimacy with mm. when did you start to focus were you a coach first or did you start writing your first book in which order did that happen you, yeah, you know, at 40 years old, I decided to go to college. So I got my degree, my bachelor's degree in human services. Okay. And then, and then I got certified as a coach and then I got certified as a Christian counselor. And then during COVID, I've literally, this is kind of cool to share. I'm going to hoot my horn a little bit. I've written a book every year. So I've Total. I you probably didn't see it on my website because I just recently no, I put it up. But my Only first, saw yeah, it's okay. Two. Yeah. So my first book was the year of COVID, and um, okay. then so then I became so I became a coach right. I was already working with people for 22, 20 years at that time, but I became a coach 
after I graduated with my degree in bachelor's because I was going to go be a therapist, but I thought, I don't want to pay the money. I don't want to spend the money. I already have student loans. So then I became a coach and then started writing my books. I don't well, want to spend the money. It's, it's, a, it's a clever way of thinking mm -hmm. because you've built yourself multiple streams of income. Sorry. Business and communications major. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure, for sure. Because I want to compliment you on your career as a whole, that you built the successful coaching business and that you've written books, which is a fantastic way of scaling. But the way that you've written it, I have to iterate again, you can hear the knowledge in the words, but that you also infuse it with the experience in telling a story. I'm sure that must have connected with your audience, hasn't it? Yes, it has. It has. I hope it does. And I hope it continues to, but I get a lot of feedback. For example, I'm so excited that there is a recovery community with a therapist um, using my 12 step of narcissistic abuse within editing and taking all the clients through it. So happy about that. It is, it's very rewarding. I'm sure. And you didn't bargain on it. You were just trying to help people, but that it is now being used in a recovery setting within the realm of the AA of of AA plural. Really, it must just right. It must really just make your head go. Yeah, it makes all the abuse um, make sense. You know, very wise wording. Makes all my losses. Yeah, all my losses and abuse make sense. You know, the Lord promises that whatever's been taken away from you will be replaced. And I'd like to think, not saying this just out of dinkum, but now you're going into the next phase of his plan for your life. You never know that you could be uh, talking at arenas and stretching that muscle to become a speaker. Because, oh, yes. I mean, you've oh, got the gift that's of the gap, my, my goal. Friend. Thank you, my friend. That's my you can, goal. To be you can back. even have your own TEDx talk because that's, that's what they it. look for I, is more vulnerability. Yes. Yes, I'm going to. I'm looking to see where I can. And I'm, I've got all that on my radar. I want to make a huge impact in raising awareness for sure. Mm. For sure. And another thing we've been going back and forth, when you began your coaching business, were you specifically aiming to work with women or did you ultimately start with women and men came along? How did that formula work? Yeah, it's it's still mostly women, but I do have men that come up and talk about it and work with me because men get abused too. Absolutely. But yeah, first it started with women and um, then it went, then it went to men and then and then and then it moved into um couples which was incredible oh of course because you do couples counseling as well i want to ask mm -hmm. a dangerous question here mm -hmm. it's doing i do i work with sorry we had a little bit of a lag there you wanted to say so i accidentally spoke over you oh no it's okay i i yeah no no you're you're okay i'm just having a little uh, a delay in the internet here, but, um, yeah, so I work with, I work with, um, there it is. Okay. I work with couples as well. So it started out with women. Then I still get men. And then, um, which I'm looking at the time, forgive me, Chris, I have yeah. someone in about five done. minutes. We almost yeah. Done. Yeah. Thank you. And then it turned into couples. And and the couples, this is the exciting thing about it, Chris, is the couples counseling I do is just I teach my marriage. <laughs> Great. I teach my marriage. <laughs> and it's a perfect example because you expound upon it on social media. Just one last question because I know that I want to be respectful of your time. It's been doing the rounds on social Thank media you. and there are people who are saying it's too easy to say that this person is a narcissist, that person is a narcissist. Do you think it is so, or are they just delaying the inevitable that they should take that good long look in the mirror? I'm with you on that one. I, I would say that if you, 
more importantly, instead of looking at their traits, look at you. Are you breaking down? Are you in addiction? Are you having difficulty sleeping, functioning, strong fatigue? Are you starting to um, doubt the person you thought they were? Look at your own symptoms in that mm. relationship, which will be the concrete answer. Um, you are supposed to thrive in relationships. You're supposed to have honor, respect, and trust. If those elements are not present, there's something wrong. And if you bring up, let's get help, and they avoid it and make empty promises, you got, I mean, pay attention. That There's your answer. All of those, that's your answer. Absolutely. And folks, with that, I hope that you've taken a good couple of notes. If you want to learn more about Azadeh Atzberger's work, you can gladly visit finallyfreelife.com. That's finallyfreelife.com. Alternatively, she's also on social media, a good number of social media handles. You can just simply punch in breakfree underscore rise and rebuild. Also, purloin some of your uh, some of her books for yourself, the latest one being 12 Steps of Recovery from Narcissistic Abuse. Other titles include Adult Children of Narcissistic Parents and also Using Food to Cope with Codependency all available on Amazon. Azadeh, thank yes. you so much. You're a superstar. And please, you need to come back. I'm going to come back. We, I, I'm going to, yes. Thank you so much, my friend, for having me. And I'm so grateful to have found you. You're amazing. We have such a similar story. Oh, my God. You're in my heart and my soul, Chris, forever. Thank you so much for having me. That's Azadeh Atzberger. I'm Chris Nell. We're reminding you that you can become an unbreakable mind, an unstoppable force, an untamed spirit, and your very own army of one, an apex predator. Yes. Folks, God bless. We'll see you in the near future.